Okay, everyone, we are at week six of our Hidden Potential online Bible study. Yeah. Isn't it kind of sad? I mean, truly, we've walked, it it's been a journey of us sitting here and talking with you guys. And so mm -hmm. I want to say thank you so much for writing Hidden Potential and sharing these messages and writing mm -hmm. with us in mind as you wrote it. Mm -hmm. So appreciate that. Um, Wendy, this week we're reading chapter six and it's all about moving forward. And I think that's beautiful because it shows where we started, right? Mm -hmm. And you've taken us on a journey, you've answered some questions for us, and we have an action step and kind of like a, a commission to like now move. That's how that chapter ended, yes. this commission. Yes, and so we're for moving us. forward. Right. And so the question we have for you this week is, mm. can I move forward? Can I? Yeah, and that's what's so funny is that we're, you're talking about moving forward, mm -hmm. And we're going to go back. Okay. It truly is a journey. <laughs> it's you like know? whiplash. Um, we're going to go back into Exodus mm. to the very beginning. Yeah. Um, I want us to go back to Exodus chapter 3. Okay. Okay. Um, because here's the thing. We have done our best together yes. each week to give some equipping, equipping conversation and um drew from the Bible some encouragement for all of us, um, for everyone listening, including ourselves, because we, we are right there with these same emotions. Yeah. Um, looking in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I try to write a book, Looking in the Mirror. Um, but we still had that nagging feeling of, right. seriously? I mean, I, I read all that you said. Mm hmm I read all, I did all the Bible study questions. I caught myself up. Mm -hmm. Maybe got behind, but I've caught up. Um, but what we need to, what I want us to remember as we move forward is this, is that God specializes in using and seeing, seeing the possibility in everybody. Yeah. He does. We, we focused on one person through our study, Moses. Yeah, Moses. But the Bible is filled with people that failed, mm -hmm. that had frailties, that had faults, that had fears, that God used. Um, I wrote a couple down. Saul yes. was chosen to be the first king of Israel, and he was from the smallest tribe. Of all the 12 tribes, the Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin was the smallest. He was the smallest. He was a handsome man. Mm -hmm. And he was well in stature. He had done some some battles. Yeah. He had he so he had a good reputation. But when um, Samuel called him to announce him as the king, he was hiding behind the luggage, is what the scripture says. Mm -hmm. So God sees the possibility. He saw the possibility in Saul. He also saw S A W <laughs> that Saul S A U L would disappoint and disobey him. Isn't that? Fascinating that God Absolutely. knew that he was going to fail or, you know, mess up right. and yet still chose. And he chose Moses. Yeah. He knew Moses I find that fascinating. was going to murder. Mm -hmm. He knew David was going to murder mm -hmm. and commit adultery. He knew he would end up surrendering at times in his life to the king of the Philistines as he ran in fear from Saul who was chasing mm -hmm. him. You've got one of the greatest evangelists in, of all times recorded nine books. I think nine books. That might be wrong. That fact might be wrong. Fact um, checker. That 13, <laughs> maybe it's nine or 13 um, of, the Old Te of the New Testament. Yeah. Um, Paul, mm -hmm. who murdered Christians. Yeah. God knew all of that. So I want us to close out the week or the study knowing and being confident that there isn't anything in our past that will discount and discredit us so good. from our pur purpose and our possibility. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, if God can use the likes of a murderer, m several murderers, mm -hmm. um, then I, certainly he can use me and you and you yeah, and everyone. So I want us to just go back to the very beginning um, of Moses' encounter with Jesus, or with God, excuse me, with God. Now we know that Moses had fled to Midian mm -hmm. 
And what I love about scripture, I love everything that's said in scripture. Yeah. But I love what's not said. I love to try to read between the lines. Because we never see in his time in Midian to the moment that he encounters God at -hmm. the burning bush, any reconciliation. We don't ever see a conversation that says, God, I sinned. Right. I killed that man. Very Please forgive me. Point. Same with Peter. Mm-hmm. We never see a reconciliation with Peter and God before, after he denied him three times. Yeah. And God, and Jesus said, feed my sheep. But something happened on the plains of Midian and in the desert of Midian. Something happened between God because God saw that, between God and Moses, because God saw, okay, he's ready now. Wow. It's like... That's, that's what I feel like our journey is all along as we are dealing with our fears and our faults and our right. failures and our frailties. He's looking at us and he's going to say, okay, she's ready now. And that's what he said to Moses. Mm-hmm. In a sense, I'm reading between the lines, as I said, <laughs> not trying to add to scripture. Now Moses, this is mm-hmm. chapter three. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. Mm-hmm. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. And Moses saw saw that the bush was on fire, that it did not burn up. Which is interesting to us. We can't imagine. Right. uh, Okay. Well, this was commonplace. In the desert, it would get so hot. There were like underbrush and Mm -hmm. sage bushes Mm -hmm. that would spontaneously catch a fire. Okay, so that would not have been something that would have been out of the ordinary. Too shocking for him to see. But the fact that it didn't burn up was was what was interesting huh. to him. So it didn't burn up. And Moses thought, I love when we get to read their, the people in the Bible's their thinking. Um, I will go over and see this strange <laughs> sight, um, which if something was burning, I probably would not go to it. No, no. I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does this bush not burn up? And when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here Mm -hmm. I am. Moses knew he was talking to him. I love that. That establishes a relationship between God and Moses. Something had happened. Yeah. He knew God. He knew God from when he was a little boy. He was raised by his own mother, even though he was supposed to be thrown in the Nile. Mm -hmm. He got to be raised by his own mother in his faith. So he knew God. So our challenge here at the end, and and what I want to leave us with, is to walk towards your burning bush. Hmm. Walk towards it and bow down. Now, I don't know what your burning bush is. Maybe it's a message, a theme that continues to carry out. God is speaking to you through your pastor every Sunday. Something is made in reference to it. And then you get in the car and there is a song about the very (laughs) same thing. And the hair on the back of your neck stands up, right? And then you open your email and Proverbs 31 Ministries Encouragement for Today has sent you a devotion on the very same topic. Yeah. So walk towards your burning bush. Mm -hmm. Bow down because it's God speaking to you. It's holy ground. He's got a calling on your life. Don't know what it is. Don't know what your responsibility is. But I, it, and it's probably not going to be a free, to free a nation yeah. from slavery. But it is no less important. That's good. So here's our final thought is we don't have to see our potential. We just have to believe in the God who does. Mm. And believe that we are a worthwhile possibility. Well, Wendy, there's really nothing else I can say to wrap us up even Mm. more. But I want to say to you, Mm. thank you for helping us get ready so that we can be used by God. I'm excited for the kingdom of God, Kendra. Mm. I'm excited. We've got lots of women who are going to walk towards the burning bush. Can you imagine what is going to happen? Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, you heard Mm. heard it from Wendy. Walk towards your burning, burning bush as we wrap up week six. You're going to read chapter six and it has been an honor to study alongside you. We have a few more days, but just know that we love you and we believe when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. Have a great week, everybody.